Hey everyone, in this video, I'm gonna go over how we are using GPT 3.5 and GPT 4 in order to automate uh, not only the creation of outbound copywriting, but also to personalize all of those emails as well. And all that we need to start is just a company's case study and the website of the company that we're gonna be writing copywriting for. And so I'm gonna go into this workflow. What I will preface with is a lot of times when I make these kinds of videos, people are always asking me for the prompts. Um, these prompts are very, very intense. I'm going to go over a couple of them in detail, but after that, I, I cannot support giving out these prompts. So I do apologize about that, but I will go over a couple of them that are important in detail. And so step one in order to getting all this done, in my opinion, is we need to get just a template copywriting of what is the like general message that we want to send. And once we have a general message that we want to send, we can then put it into a different prompt where we can personalize the outreach based on what is true about the company or what we found about the company. So we just have to enter a website into this column right over here. And then we use the scrape website feature to scrape the content of the website. And so uh, usually we'll get all of the content, but if the content is super long, we'll just get the company description and it just picks between the two. The first thing that we do is we build an idea. We use GPT-4 to build an ideal customer profile of the company. And this is some one that it looks like, um, you know, we're saying that they target mid to large companies in certain sectors, and this is their buyer persona. And sometimes it even names them. Um, as well. Sophia, HR executive, and it talks about all of this stuff as well. The prompts in here um, is pretty intense. Jordan Crawford actually wrote this system prompt. So if you want to stop and screenshot it, uh, you know, all credit to him. And then I just basically asked for three buyer personas about the company. Then what I want to figure out is just more information about the company. What do they do? Who, like, how are they better there than their competitors? What are companies usually doing to solve this problem if they don't use this solution? And so again, we have a, a huge system prompt here, and then we have the uh, answers down here. And so this is exactly what we want to solve for. What is the uh, problem this company solves? Without this company, how would people be doing this? What is something new or novel we can re teach the person? What is the cost of an action? How is this company different from competitors? So then we get all of this done uh, here. So now after we scrape the website, we have an ideal customer profile format, and then we have uh, more information about the company just from all of this information. Now we get to the actual email writing. And so in the email writing, I'm not gonna go over all, uh, every single one of these uh, integrations is writing an email. I'm not gonna go over all of the prompts, I'm just gonna to talk to you about the differences in the prompt and we're just gonna go over the first one. And so in the first one, uh, we have a pretty large system prompt. And uh, this is actually somebody else wrote this named Edward. And so uh, I can't totally show that because that is his stuff. But other than that, we're basically saying, hey, write a persuasive, persuasive message to a prospect given the information about the company. This is information about, uh, uh, about the company that we're reaching out to. Actually, we should probably fix this. This is information about the company we are reaching out to. And then company description. This is coming from the competitive intelligence over here. And then this is the description of the ideal customer profile. Uh, so then, then we enter the case study over here. So ideal customer profile goes in here and then we have the case study. And then we just give it some rules and then we give it examples. So I filled out an example and then I wrote one of the emails and then I filled out another example and then I wrote another one of the emails. So the output looks something like this. Uh, you know, I saw your team's impressive uh, recent growth, yet I couldn't help but wonder if prospecting time is becoming a burden. Allow me to show that we helped an, an outbound sales team automate their manual research, enabling them to focus exclusively on selling. Considering the savings uh, in time and resources, would you be open to discuss how Clay would similarly assess, uh, assess your teams? Our aggregated data from 50 plus sources could dramat dramatically streamline your prospecting process. So is this perfect? No. Is this 80% done and I could fix this in two minutes of editing? Yes. And that's mainly the goal that I'm trying to get here. I'm, I'm doing this very much in a stepwise function. So now we have email one over here. The next thing that we do is we use GPT-4 to make suggestions about how email one could be better or this first email could be better. So we get these suggestions written out and it says, you know, suggestions from this email, one, two, three, four, five, six. We had a bunch of like, um, 
So I think it's just up to five is the things that I had it checking for. So then we uh, do, we have these suggestions and then we have this column where it's literally GPT-4 editing GPT-4 is what I call it, where we're literally saying, hey, this is the message, edit it with this criteria here. And then we get the output. So we'll read the same one. Notice your team's growth, uh, congrats. This could mean your team spends more time prospecting and selling. At Clay, we've helped teams like past client's name. Great, we'll fill that in. Uh, freeing their time for manual research and focusing on selling. With our solution, your team could experience similar uptake. Leveraging 50 plus data sources. Interested to chat about how Clay can optimize your team's process. A little long, kind of interesting. Maybe I like the first email better, but you know that's just the way it is. And so now we have all of these variations. So one, two, three, four, five, six. All of these variations, every single one of them is just for email one, because I kind of know that I really can't trust this to really write the whole message. I just want as many options to choose from as possible so I can combine them all together, quickly edit them, and then pick out my favorite one. And that's all I really want to do. And so for this variation, we've prompted it to highlight the cost of an action. Remember in competitive intelligence, we got the cost of an action done. So over here, we just prompt it more heavily to uh, highlight that cost of an action. So we're, we're more attacking the status quo of what they're currently doing. In this integration, we're highlighting the case study where we're putting more weight on the case study. And we say, hey, like really drive home the, the points of the case study here. In this variation, we are talking about a competitive edge. So here we're highlighting how we are better than competitors and uh, people should really be using the tool because of you know how we do things differently than competitors. And this one, I just gave it far more examples. In the other ones, I think I gave it two examples. And in this one, I gave it four examples. And then those were all pretty generic examples. When I say generic examples, they followed like a base template of, hey, this is why I'm reaching out to you. Um, like poke the bear type question slash, um, you know, a, a tie in between how we helped another customer, case study, and then call to action. That's generally what we wrote. Then here I give creative campaigns where we're doing other things with AI and see how I even put in like the AI generation and, and all these custom variables so that I, I just wanted to see what GPT-4 would come up with if we just let it rip a little bit more. So I give it more examples about some creative uh, campaigns that I've come up with where it isn't all filled out, but it uses better um, language. Then I just did it with a value-based call to action. Basically, I want to, you know, just get an idea of something to offer for free to just provide value upfront to the uh, prospect. And so in, the, in this flow, yes, you might have seen it. We do have eight different variations of email one, and that is very much by design. I assume over time, I'll start deleting some of these because I'd find that some are better than others. But right now, as soon as I have an idea for a variation of email one, I'm just putting it into action. And then uh, no sequence would be, uh, complete without follow-ups. And so usually I find that I follow up in three different ways. Um, one is I, whatever case study I mentioned in the first email, usually we just dig deeper in the second email and we talk about, hey, you know, those people that we were talking about in the first email, this is, you know, we, we dive deeper in and we're like, these three ways is particularly how we help them. So this follow-up uh, does precisely that. It ingests the email that we sent before, and then I still remind it about the competitive analysis and the ICP. And um, then we still give it the case study and we write a follow-up email uh, given like, you know, three things about how we help the other company. Here again, for follow-up two, we're highlighting the cost of an action where we're just like really driving home, like, hey, if you don't take action on this, like this could be the potential cost that you could see. And then for follow-up three, this is just a very short to the point email. Like you can see, like, ever wondered how improving your recruitment process could speed up your growth? We recently used our headhunting methods to fill all vacancies for a client within two weeks, vastly improving their operations. Just like very short to the point, just get it out there. And then we have email three, which follows a lot of the same rules. I could probably do the same thing for email three as what we're doing with email one. But basically the big difference here is that email three just uses a different case study in the input so that we could get a different email generated uh, for that. And I even think um, I talked about, yes. 
So there's basically three kinds of offers where you're either helping somebody save money, you're helping them get more money, or you're helping them save time. And so I also told it, hey, you know, whichever one we mentioned in the email, the first email about how we can save them time, or we can make them more money, or, you know, we could save them money. Uh, whichever one we mentioned, like, let's try to go into a different direction is the, the other thing I've done with email three here. And so very much, I am not trying to claim that I have figured out like a full end to end, like I'm ready to hit go on all of these sequences. My whole goal here is to just get 80% of the way there. And so this being considered now, what we can do is we can take this copywriting and after we take this copywriting, we can say, okay, hey, this is, this is the best email that I wanna send. This is the one. And then we can take it to another Clay workflow where now we have all of our prospecting data about all of these companies. We have valid email addresses. We've run a, a more deeper analysis on them. And now we wanna use that deeper analysis in order to influence the messaging that we're going to uh, be reaching out with. And so what we can do here now is I can now say, hey, given this template, edit this template so it's very relevant to the person that I'm reaching out to. Here's the information about the person that I'm reaching out to, right? And so this message, I'll show you the prompt over here too, where we're saying, you know, I'm going to provide you several inputs uh, in order to rewrite a message. Um, here's the message that needs to be edited edit this message with the data points. And then I give context on the data points. So I'm like, this is the, the company sells to these job titles. Great. Uh, this is the description of the company. And, you know, we know that this company is growing their sales team because SDR slash BDR joined in the last six months, you know, and then I constrain its creativity a little bit over here with like, if one of the inputs is empty, ignore it and work with what you have and like all this other stuff. Then I wrote examples of it myself of what I would write given data being true about a company. I only gave it two examples. I could improve this by giving it more um, and changing the prompt around a little bit. But basically you can see, um, if this is true, that means that all three inputs that we're looking for were filled out. So this should be the best version of the message. And then false is going to just have a couple of the things filled out, which it still should be a pretty good message. And so the original message that we started with is just, um, uh, it's actually just an okay message. Like I didn't even pick a great one. First name, I saw your team's impressive grocery recently, yet I couldn't help but wonder if prospecting time is becoming a burden. Allow me to share what we helped an outbound sales team automate their manual research, enabling them to focus exclusively on selling. Considering the savings and time resources, would you be open to discuss how Clay could similarly assess your teams? Our aggregate data from 50 plus data sources could dramatically streamline your uh, prospecting process. That's the base email. So now when we feed data into this email, this is what it would look like. Uh, congratulations on bringing Christopher Franco onto your sales team. With your commitment to aiding teachers through class technologies, I understand prospecting instructors, teachers, and educators uh, efficiently is crucial. Clay could save your team valuable time by automating the outbound research process. This could give them more opportunity to focus on promoting essential services, including your uh, excellent new Zoom tools, which is, that's just great. It got it from the company description. Um, would you like to discuss how the aggregation of data from 50 sources could boost your prospecting experience? And so even in this email, there's like a couple things that I would change. Like I would probably talk a little bit more about how we helped another company and give it a better case study. Um, but I don't give a huge case study in the other, in the previous email. So that's fine. And then maybe we would shorten up this call to action, but all things that we can totally fix, but otherwise great email, right? I noticed Zage's pioneering security work in OT, IT, and cloud sectors. Awesome. As you're expanding your sales team, congrats to Nicholas Brown. That's great that it did it like that. Are you considering ways to optimize outbound research? We specialize, specialize in automating just that, freeing, team sales, uh, freeing sales teams for what they excel in, selling. By leveraging data from 50 plus sources, we could drastically simplify and accelerate our interactions with all these titles. Awesome. Could we connect soon to discuss this more in detail? Unless... The people of YouTube disagree. I think that's a, a great email. Let me know why you would say that's not an email. I mean, yeah, there's things that we could tweak about it, but like this is all just prompting and I could have started with a base, of like a better base template. So anyway, so now this one, remember, we don't have all three of the data points filled out. Only two of the data points are filled out in this one. 
Uh, I see that Vertiland works meticulously with warehouse managers, operations managers, and logistics directors, helping make logistics process automation uh, efficient and reliable. Combining this with your team's growth, I wonder if the task of outbound research seems exhaustive sometimes. We've helped teams streamline this process, ensuring their focus remains on selling. Our tool calls data from 50 plus data sources, easing their workload. Could it be valuable to explore how we can similarly support your growing team? Great. So it didn't even have all of the data and it's still able to create something like that. Let's try another one where we did have all the data. I admire your work in promoting a more global workforce with your growth, uh, with your growth, namely Kelly Bowling joining your team recently. Have you been burdened with outbound prospecting? We have experience helping sales teams like yours cut down manual research for CFOs, CEOs, and HR managers. That's great. Why not give your team uh, more time to focus on what they do best, selling? Our tool automatically collects, uh, collates data from 50 plus data sources. Could we chat about how we might be able to do this more efficiently? So again, if we were to make the template better, I can already see ways that this would be better. Like it seems like the value prop that it keeps driving home is the 50 plus data sources instead of the automation of the workflow, which we could just change in the template. It's not that big of a deal. And, um, but yeah, this is just another thing that I've been working on in order to first get the template right and then be able to change that template depending on who we're reaching out to. And as always, thanks for watching the video and, uh, let me know what you think. If this is going to be available via a form, I will not, like I said, I'm, I can't give away the prompts because to be honest, it's just too much work and, and I'm not going to support that. Um, but, you know, pause the video and take a look at the prompts that I did show. Uh, that should answer a lot of your questions. But uh, yeah, let me know if this was useful.